Welcome in to this week six edition of Red and Blue Smoke. I am your host, Zach Barry. As always, we are joined by Greg Jones, and this podcast is brought to you by LB's Meat Market in Oxford, 2008 University Avenue, across the street from the K. Roger. Greg, we were talking about it just now before we hit record. Still, I think my heart has just now returned back to a normal beats per minute. Yeah, man, what a great game. I mean, I well, I watched it. Uh, I watched the last two minutes of the game in the back of my uh, of Chris Blackwell's uh, backyard, and he, we just put a TV on the back porch. And uh, I've tried to get the furthest away from the TV, but I I can somehow see it. And uh, yeah, man, it was uh, it was heart pounding, and you know, uh, it, it it's hard to be an Ole Miss fan. You know, it's uh, it's never easy, and uh, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they got it done. I just, you know, uh, in the back of the mind, uh, whenever, uh, you know, whenever, um, whenever they did the back shoulder catch, they caught that. And I was like, Hey, I was like, you know, this might, might be all right because, you know, you had figured after the back shoulder, he would probably kind of run, run it a couple times, you know, to kind of milk that clock. Then he goes back to back screens and got, when walks in the touch, you know, walks in the end zone with 30, 38 seconds left, and you're like, oh, my God, it's just too much time. Um, so, I don't know, man. It's just never – it's never easy for, for us Ole Miss fans. It was – um, I mean, the game had everything. It had great crowd. The atmosphere was top-notch, uh, largest crowd in the history of the stadium. Uh, two quarterbacks just duking it out, going back and forth. Um, no signs of defense really by any team until the very end when Ole Miss's defense shined on the last uh, couple possessions, got the stop to win it, um, and got the stop to set up the game-winning touchdown, which was huge. We'll get into it all here. But at 700 yards of, t- of offense, Dart was outstanding. Uh, I think he's – if he can get through the next couple weeks um, – Arkansas and Auburn with a bye week mixed in there uh, and set up a big one against A&M in November, kind of putting together a little bit of a dark horse Heisman campaign right now. He's got great numbers. Um, He's taking care of the football, very efficient. And, you know, what do you know, Greg, when you get all your, uh, your playmakers healthy, good things happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, I got to give a little shout out to Jordan Dan. I mean, Jaden Daniels, what a, he was a great, I mean, imagine, Imagine him being on Alabama's team, like you know, just. Uh, I, I hope he shot up on a, a couple of NFL uh, draft boards. Uh, I mean, but there was a couple throws that he threw that was just unbelievable, and uh, you know, uh, he 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 seems very calm, cool, collected. You know, so but yeah, I mean, got to go back to Dart. I mean, uh, whenever he bunny hopped, the whenever he did the, you know, looked at all three uh receivers and then you know saw the opening and then uh, made that run and then bunny hop that guy uh just the kids just playing on another level and you know just i will never doubt Ole Miss at home ever again regardless of uh who they're playing i mean they're just um just they're a totally different team uh in the vault and you can just and you got to tip your hat to both the quarterbacks because i mean i know the defenses are you know we are you would say we're bad but I mean that's just the the what happens when you go up against a good quarterback. I'm pretty sure the Ole Miss defense looked like that at practice a lot this year. You know against our <laughs> offense whenever they're clicking. So just um, you know the defense got the stops and uh, it's a and and that's the thing with the defense is like you know just bend but don't break. You know uh, find a yeah. way to get you know to make plays. Uh, you know you look, look at the uh, the fumble. You know when you're up uh, when whenever I think it was Anthony that made that. <clears throat> that big play and that big uh, hit and the fumble and everything. I mean, you know, just kind of – you got to take your spots and you got to, you know, do it right because the offense is going to win more times – nine times out of ten because they're going to a particular place and the defense is trying to figure out where they're going to. So, um, man, it's just an overall really good game. And, uh, you know, I I thought that the um, just at the end that just uh, there was somehow some way that we would lose that game, but the defense found a way and, they, like we were saying – if it's one second sooner, that's past interference. That you know, there's a lot of things going on um, in that in that last play. So, um, but yeah, shout out to the Revs for showing a lot of character last week, and you know, and coming back from a, you know, they were down uh, how many points uh, with eight minutes to go, but 
nine, ten? Nine, nine. I think it was forty nine forty, I believe. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, uh, all like last week, I was saying, you know, what kind of character is this team going to have? I mean, and that just shows uh, what kind of character this team does have. And uh, just I was totally wrong on it. And uh, you know, shout out for Jackson Dart and the offense for getting it done. Yeah. Um. Uh, my boy Michael Borky over at Sports Talk put this tweet up. Um, last four possessions for LSU. Uh, they had the one four play 55 yard drive for a touchdown. The other three, three plays minus five yards punt, four plays 20 yards punt, six plays 49 yards end of game. So, like you said, bend but don't break. Pete Golding's doing his best, man. I, I keep telling people you got to be patient. They've got some dudes, but not as many as he would like. Um, so it's just you, you got to be patient with this with this defense. They they're piecing it together with the portal. They've got some young dudes that are flashing. Um, Suntarian Perkins is making plays. Xavier Harris, you know, a couple years in the system, he's starting to emerge. You've got some young dudes like Trey Washington playing a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's honestly Dart gets a lot of the attention quarterback the trigger man for the offense but Quinshawn Judkins had his best game of the season 177 yards touchdown um and then the receivers man Trey Harris was was a monster but Dayton Wade and Jordan Watkins continue to be the pulse of this offense in my opinion they make play after play after play Watkins has quickly become one of the best long touchdown receivers in Ole Miss history. He's in the company with Elijah Moore, A.J. Brown, um, in terms of 30-plus yard touchdown receptions. He now has five. Elijah Moore only had five in his entire career, and um, D.K. Metcalf had seven in his entire career, so Watkins already has five. Um, but just just an amazing game. Ulysses Bentley was outstanding as a change-of-pace guy. He was great. Um, had a, the long touchdown run, just ran away from LSU dudes. But yeah, I just you can't say enough. Caden Priestcorn, Trey yeah. Harris are back. You have to hope. I, I will Mark say Franklin this, you know, is like close. The, I will say the uh, the the conversions on third down. You know, like those those were huge early in the first, in the in the beginning of the game, uh, and it definitely I think freed up the the running game towards the end of the game. You know, um, but. but Priest Corn literally blocked somebody so good they had to throw a flag. I mean, it was like, I mean, <laughs> him and, and, and him know, and Cade I, Lee got uh, hosed. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually I think he had the the one he got flagged for, which I don't think was holding. That was just a really good, just a guy just getting manhandled. And then on the touchdown, the guy that got juked, I think Priest Corn came back and pancaked yep. him like on the on the one yeah. too. So I mean, it was a <laughs> rough play. Rough play for I think I don't know I think it was number twenty one but I thought I was like man yeah. you know but I, I just scene. you know um, but yeah no the whenever the running game's going you know uh, it frees up those slants and those out routes because Dart has a really nice ball that throws on the outside you know that out route you know that ten mm -hmm. yard out route um, so uh, who knows man I mean you know Arkansas is going to be a tough game and you can't you know and you can't you know uh, look past them but. Um, you know, you got to have that same energy that you had last week, and uh, um, we'll we'll see. It's going to be a, a tough weekend, I think, this weekend also. Kiffin now improves to eighteen and five at home, and ten and four against the SEC. That's I know that like this was like the big marquee win that he, that has eluded him his entire tenure at Ole Miss, and we've we've hammered him for it because he hasn't won the big game. He's been close, but he hasn't really done it. You know, you've had at Tennessee in 2021 when Matt Corral just went ham. You had the home win against A&M that, that same year, had game day, big atmosphere, you win that one. Outside of that, I mean, it's like Indiana in the bowl game, which whatever, they didn't even have their quarterback who now is at Washington burning record books. Um, so, yeah, it's just constantly eluded him. You know, Alabama last year, he had that chance to rubber stamp a, a marquee dub and couldn't get it. So this was huge, I think, for Kiffin just to kind of get that monkey off his back. And, you know, he's won a ton of games. The program is is has been elevated to the highest of heights that it's ever been outside of Johnny Vaught in the 60s. He, you know, 10, ga 10 wins in the regular season for the first time ever. He's done all that, but, like, this was the type of win that he had to get or it was going to be really hard 
for not only the team, but the program to bounce back because it was right there and they got it done. And again, like you said, Jay Daniels was outstanding. I don't care who was playing corner, how good the coverage was. Some of those throws you just can't defend. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously the um, the touchdown that didn't get uh, overturned, which is ridiculous, but there was the touchdown in the other end zone where I uh, think, no, it was on the opposite end. I mean, the guy just literally turned his head and, like, he just was, like, opened up his hands and it literally, like, dropped right in the middle. I was like, man, this kid can play. So I knew we were up against it, but I knew, you know, like I said, all it takes is a couple of, you know, the, uh, defensive stops and uh, whoever gets the ball last uh, usually wins that game nine out of times out of ten. But um, whenever we left too much clock, I was literally, I was like, oh, we gave him too much time. But, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And, I, you know, another cool thing is like, you know, the, the father-son video, you know, I know that uh, that's gone viral. That's cool. Uh, and, of course, the uh, security guard, uh video i mean it just man it was just it was real cool because i felt like you know a lot of as you know a lot of Ole Miss fans the reason why we rushed the field everything is just kind of get a monkey off our back man you know we've kind of lost some tough games and it just it's it's just really really good to feel good for once why do why do people care about rushing the field why do people think that's stupid it's college football it's supposed to be fun and silly like yeah rushing the field is awesome yeah I That's mean, what makes yeah. college football great, in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, you know, but we live in an era that everybody has their video, uh, their cameras out and everything and video and everything. So uh, <laughs> you get to see a, a bunch of good, you know, action that, you know, stupid action that does happen. But, uh, but no, there's a lot of good feels, good stuff. And that that father son moment, that was really cool. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, and an LSU know, fan pretty, recorded it to boot. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there was multiple moments like that. And it's just cool to, you know, get moments like that, you know, put together instead of, you know, watching something stupid like a security guard playing <laughs> li- linebacker at uh, at Jackson Academy. Yeah. The, 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 the sideline to sideline mobility was lacking there. Really stiff yeah. hips. I'd be afraid to know what that three cone drill time was. <laughs> <laughs> probably, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, DK probably beats him out. I don't. We'd have to ask some NFL scouts how you know how that factors in. Um, I think he would be really good at punt coverage. The first guy closest to the snapper, you know, he has that <laughs> like that nice form the, uh, where he can probably, you know, uh, no, that was you know, it is what it is. But yeah, a great win for the Revs. Uh, just you know, got to bring that momentum and that energy to you know tonight, uh, this weekend. Um, you know, Arkansas. I know they're down, but you know it, they always—they're uh, always kind of a thorn in our side sometimes. Absolutely, we're going to look ahead to Arkansas here in a moment. But before we do that, we're going to take our first break and get into our grub segment, as we do each and every week. We have Greg on here because he is the expert. So after this quick word from the sponsors, we'll be back to talk barbecue as Ole Miss takes on the hogs this weekend. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Are you looking at cutting your health insurance premiums by as much as 20 to 30%? Are you aging into Medicare and need help finding a Medicare supplement plan? Call Drew Moak of USA Benefits Group at 601-953-8449. Drew is an Ole Miss grad located in Mississippi and licensed in seven states. He works with the nation's second largest health insurance brokerage with access to 35 different carriers, and he can help you with any of your health insurance needs. From regular health plans to life insurance to dental and vision and even Medicare, he has it all covered. Now more than ever, it is critical to have a health insurance agent who is local and accessible. So call Drew Moak at 601 953-8449 and get your free quote today. Cooler temperatures are right around the corner and as I like to say, it's the perfect time to play a round of golf. And if you're looking for a premier golf course in Northwest Mississippi or the Memphis, Tennessee area, go to Cherokee Valley Golf Club in Olive Branch, 15 minutes from the Memphis International Airport. With those cooler temps, you might want to stay warm and comfortable on the course this fall Go in the clubhouse and check out their new selection of outerwear from Travis Matthew and FootJoy, including FootJoy's new lightweight hoodie. This 18-hole par 72 course includes four sets of tees to accommodate all players and has 11 lakes, 52 bunkers, and the wide zoysia fairways and extra-large champion Bermuda greens and clean roughs make for an excellent opportunity every single time to post a number. 
If you need a premier golf experience in the Mid-South, go to Cherokee Valley Golf Club. Call them at 662-893-4444 or check them out, olivebranchgolf.com. The College Corner is headed to Oxford. Stop by their new location in the Oxford Commons off Sisk Avenue. They'll have 4,000 square feet of Rebel gear ready for your trip to the Grove. On your next trip to Oxford, stop by the College Corner or our other great locations in Ridgeland and Flowood. Hats, shirts, polos, pullovers, sweats, T-shirts. College Corner has it all. And as always, you can visit us online at collegecornerstore.com. That's collegecornerstore.com. The College Corner, where your game day apparel meets. And we are back here on Red and Blue Smoke. Zach Barry, Greg Jones here with you. My good buddy from LB's Meat Market in Oxford, Mississippi. Before we get into it, make sure you get there early. Go ahead and go on Thursday, get you a plate lunch, and get you all your protein that you need for the weekend because it is going to be another jam-packed weekend in Oxford as I think they are probably going to go back-to-back sellouts. Um, Earlier this week, they were close to 1,000 tickets left. I imagine those will be uh, accounted for by Saturday um, as uh, they're doing a stripe out in the stadium. But let's get into this. uh, Let's get into this grub segment here. All right. Barbecue. We're going to focus on the pork, obviously, for Arkansas. We're not going to talk about beef. What is your what kind of vehicle do you like your barbecue in terms of sandwich, pulled pork plate? Um, you know, what's, if you're making a barbecue plate in LBs to serve for a plate lunch or, you know, catering, whatever, what's your, what's your go-to, you know, vessel for barbecue? I would say, uh, uh the bacon wrap pork loin that we do for the baseball team. That's, pr- I mean, cause we can feed a lot of people. We smoke it wrapped in bacon and I smother it in, uh, Hoover sauce and, uh, sweet baby Ray. So like, and I can feed a lot of people with that. Uh, of course, the pulled pork is always a, a go-to. I'm a big fan of the pork steak. I don't know. Have you ever had a, a pork steak? Oh, I have not. Please tell me more. So it's just about, it's just a sliced Boston butt. It's like a one-inch sliced Boston butt. Um, you know, you kind of char it uh, directly on the heat for a little bit and kind of get a crust, and then you put them on the top rack. It's almost kind of like country-style ribs. Have you ever done country-style ribs? I have not. This oh, is well. all news to me. Please okay. share more. Uh, what about rib tips? I've had that. I've had that. Okay, so rib tips are going to be the top of the of the spare rib. So okay. what you can do is just take a whole spare rib, and then there's a little bone that goes in between the rib bone and the rib tip bone. And you just take that top part off, and then okay. that's where your rib tips are. So what I usually do is I just leave them whole um you know smoke them lather them up and uh, you can low them slow them or you can you know chop uh smoke them for about an hour and then that way they're kind of cooked and you can cut them into you know pieces and do them kind of like burn ends and kind of you know make a sauce and a pan and kind of almost but those are really those are really good to go to the same thing you want to do with that uh pork steak you uh like i said it's a one inch steak but one inch uh sliced boston butt uh, season it however you long, like. Uh, you know, I like uh, paprika on pork. I don't like paprika on beef. It's just that's me. That's my personal opinion. There's nothing against it or uh, or, or that that saying that it's better. But uh, I just prefer salt and pepper on beef. But um, we make a house rub that I just season it with and just kind of char it on each side for and get a good crust, kind of like you're cooking a you know thin cut ribeye or something like that. Uh, but this is pork, so you can cook it a little bit longer. So that's why you put it on that top rack with some tinfoil and just kind of base it with some mop rub or whatever you want to do. But yeah, man, uh, barbecue pork steak. That's a that's a hidden gem that a lot of people don't know about. What do you think the reason is behind paprika being better, in your opinion, on pork than beef? It's you a, think that's a personal it, preference? or is It's there a like more a... of a smoky. It has a more smoky flavor. I think paprika has okay. more of a smoky flavor um and it's just uh, i just i I, i'm just not a uh, a smoked beef kind of guy i kind of like uh i kind of like my beef like at 120 degrees with a really good chart on each side you know and uh so just 
I don't know. It just is what it is. But yeah, if, if, uh, if you're eating really good beef, you want to taste that beef. So you kind of want to char it on each side and slice it, put some salt and pepper on it. I'm a big fan of putting the seasoning on it afterwards instead of before. Okay. So that's just a little tidbit that I've picked up in the last, you know, years dealing with beef and stuff like that. Uh, I just make my own steak seasoning and, uh, it's a kind of a creation of a lot of different flavors, but mostly is going to be kosher salt and cracked black pepper. Um, some celery seed. I'll give away one of my secrets. So celery seed is the key for some, uh, for beef. I feel like. Okay. I like that. Um, as far as your preference for ribs, are you wet or dry? What's your go-to yeah, there? I'm definitely a wet guy. Uh, I mean, I, what, what? Okay, so um, a lot of people, you know, go a lot of different ways on doing ribs. Um, I have to, you know, kind of go on two different ways. I can either smoke it for an hour, finish them off in the oven, or just – go straight in the oven and then finish them off on the smoker. Um, I'm kind I kind of, I have to cook for like, um, to where the, whenever I cook a rack of ribs, I can't overcook them because, uh, they're going to be cooking whenever I slice them and put them up the temple over. So, the, mm -hmm. uh, that's what we do for the baseball team. So I usually put them on the smoker for like an hour and 30 minutes on like lower smoke temperature. And okay. then I do them, I do them dry. I smoke them dry and then I cut them into two bones and then I literally stack them up on the pan and then sauce them and cover them because, um, they, they put them in warmers. The, the, the baseball team got me some warmer. So, uh, it's oh, going nice. to be continued. It's going to continue to cook in that warmer. So if I go ahead and cook it to where it's falling off the bone and, in the, and, and it goes in the warmer they're they're going to pick up a bunch of meat that falls off. So, that's kind of it's just it's kind of the art of, of cooking you know whenever you ha uh, have to figure that out because you know you're continuing to cook it after you've done already cooked it once so um but yeah that's the perfect way to do ribs is smoke them and then and to slice where they're still kind of chewy and then just wrap them up and then sauce them and um, put them in a tin foil and then eat them where that meat's falling off the bone okay are you, are you a, do you like teeth are you a teeth mark rib guy or like you like the bone to fall off i like the bone to slide off yeah. um because there's some easier. people that are teeth mark uh ribs like they want to you know bite into yeah. the rib like that's I feel not like that, i don't like that yeah i feel like that can get to be a little too chewy yeah you kind of want just, it to fall know. off and kind of melt I like different style, like Asian style ribs. I mean, like that, you know, uh, sesame seed, but you know, it's all traditional with the like Hoover a little like sticky rib for sure. Uh, it's all traditional Hoover and sweet baby rays up here at LB's. Are you a slaw or no slaw on the sandwich? Oh, huge slaw. I love, I'll put extra slaw. I'm a slaw guy. Me too. I like I... to put slaw on my hot dog. That's not how much I like slaw. You ever had a slaw dog? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm a huge proponent of coleslaw. Yeah. I get, I, I get. Uh, but it has I, I to catch... be. A, I mean, like, what about what is like? Is it a vinegar base or a mayonnaise? I mean, like, I prefer vinegar. Yeah, I mean, but I don't hate I, mayonnaise. I, uh, I mean, like, I like, you know, kind of like the traditional, like, uh, like Popeyes and Chick Fil A coleslaw, like that chopped up man, you know that. I like that on like my pulled pork. See, I get, I catch a lot of heat for like at Cane's. I like their slaw and people will yeah, say, why do you not get extra toast? Like, well, I like the slaw. Yeah. And plus you can make a little sandwich with, uh, put it on your toast and a little chicken tender and put some sauce on it. You can make a little sandwich out of it. Yeah. You can make a chicken tender sandwich from Zaxby's with your slaw. There you go. Yeah. You just get like your, your Texas toast and make it like a little taco. Yeah, and it's for your body. Yeah, you know the lettuce, the the salad, the cabbage. It's for your body. Yeah, that, that's uh, uh, what. Uh, yeah, you yeah, know he John... was in town. Really? Yeah, he was. Oh man, I need to go back through I his had... timeline and see if he was tweeting through it. Yeah, um, I had one of our captains come up, and um, we took care of him, and took well, took him to the library and everything, and he went to the game, and uh, 
He's oh, like, wow. yeah. He's like, I grew. He's like, I grew up with that guy. And uh, he's like, I just took. A, he's like, I just saw. Him. He's like, I was walking in, walking into the. And, you know, that I'm trying to uh, emulate his accent, which I don't know why I'm trying to do that. But uh, but yeah, he has a big Cajun slur. And uh, he's like, I'm walking into the game, and I hear Jordy. And I looked over, and he's like, man, nobody knows my name around here. You know, I'm in, I'm you know five hours away from home, and it was uh, on your beans, guy. <laughs> yeah respect your body as he says respect your body all right um i guess last thing here any i know you prefer to make your own um any favorite barbecue spots you know it could be local it could be mississippi it could be anywhere but any favorites mm, man back in the day on highway 51 in, in ridgeland there was a place called big gyms uh that was kind of really that and uh little oh uh, is it little dewey's yeah in starkville? in starkville yeah it's a good spot yeah so like i was for my dad lives in starkville so i was kind of forced as a kid to uh go to starkville and go to all these basketball camps and baseball camps so yes in the archives there are some pictures of short little fat greg and uh mississippi <laughs> state uh you know uh clothes so uh so yeah with that being said little dewey's was always you know because we he always wanted to go there um but yeah, big gyms back in the day, and uh, I don't know if they're still there, but they uh, had the just literally one side of the of the place was uh, just a just a clear case full of like smoked sausages and ribs and half chickens and stuff like that. Um, just I don't know, man. I'm just um, that always uh, remembers in my head is big gyms, and then of course uh, you can't go wrong with Mama Hamels. I mean, I'm a Madison kid, so uh, I mean I got to mention Mama Hamels. Uh, uh, throw in there just because they have chicken livers on their buffet yeah I, I one of my best friends went to state and every time we'd go i was like we, we got to go to at least little dewey's or stromboli's if i'm there yeah there's nothing wrong with it. i mean like i respect those this, two spots yeah i will say this like i um whenever i do my meatloaf i usually do barbecue sauce ketchup and mustard uh, strictly because that's what uh, Mama Hamels did. So I would just, Mama Hamels can do it. I can do it. So uh, that, that's uh, one of the a little secret for meatloaves. All right. Take our final break here before we get to the third segment, get into week six games, talk a little Ole Miss Arkansas and look around the rest of the SEC. So hang tight. We'll be right back. This podcast also comes to you thanks to Bluff City Advisory Group, Memphis's leading team of finance professionals who can provide advanced assistance with financial planning, pension, and qualified plan support, and business and estate planning strategies as well. Former Ole Miss Rebel and founding partner Ben Still, along with his elite level customer service team, make it their goal to help you meet the ongoing demands of your financial needs. Learn about this and more at BluffCityAdvisory.com. And we are back here, final segment, Red and Blue Smoke, getting ready for Saturday's game against Arkansas, 6.30 p.m. SEC Network at Vaught-Hemingway Stadium. Should be another fantastic crowd as the Rebels look to improve to 5-1, and one, Greg. Coming off LSU, maybe a bit of a hangover spot, possibly, but do we do we actually think that Arkansas has much left in the tank here because not a big bodied legitimate receiver. They normally have had in the last couple of years with KJ Jefferson, you know, there's no Traylon Burks, no Trey Knox. Um, Luke Haas, unfortunately lost for the year, broke his clavicle in last week's game. He was honestly their best playmaker on offense because rocket Sanders is still banged up. And man, he was a true freshman that was looking like an all American and he's out. Um, don't know how healthy Rocket Sanders is, but how do you see this one shaking out this weekend? I know the line opened at nine and a half, and it has quickly ballooned up to 11 and a half. Home game, we already talked about how good Ole Miss has been at home under Kiffin. How do you see this one going on Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, I, surely uh, we should be up by two touchdowns and, or whenever they have the ball last and be you know safe. Uh I, um, you know, but you, you always look at that emotional letdown, but, you know, Arkansas's played two really big games on their schedule. You know, LSU is a big game for them. The, I think it's the, was the golden boot um, trophy. And then 
Um, you know, Arkansas and Texas A&M, that's a, like a huge rivalry, an old Southwest rivalry. So that's a big game for them also to lose those games back that. And you were saying the injuries are bad and everything and they're piling up. But, you know, KJ Jefferson can only do so much. Um, I, I just think we roll. I think we should at least win by two or three touchdowns. But hope I don't jinx it because uh, I know I took LSU last week, you know, hoping that the Revs would stay up. But uh, please don't let me jinx it, jinx it this weekend. I know this this rivalry gets a lot of credit for being, you know, quote, drunk or crazy or wild. And, you know, there are some games that don't make sense. There have been some crazy ones. Um, the home team typically handles business in this one. And I think that that's key for Ole Miss this weekend because, Greg, if this was at Fayetteville, oh, I would yeah, be a I'd little, be, I'd I'd be a be little concerned. Yes, for sure. Regardless um, of the injuries, regardless of the injuries. Yeah, yeah. Like I would, I would be concerned if it was on the road because Ole Miss rarely I mean, we plays have taken well. Some really good teams up there, and it and it was bad, like almost worse than Alabama. Bad, like it was. It, yeah, it was very very comparable. I think the last win in Fayetteville was 2008 with Houston Nut. The 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 Houston Nut, you know, is back revenge game. Um, and I was in, I was in the building for that one, and it was the vitriol in that stadium was was palpable. Uh, 2012 was a win, but that was in Little Rock, so that one doesn't count. Um, yeah, I mean, outside of that, man, it's it's been tough sledding for Ole Miss and Fayetteville. So getting this one. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. 2018 Ole Miss won. 37, 33. Was that in Little Rock? Rock? Hold on. I think that might've been Little Rock. Wincipedia might be lying to me. Was it Fayetteville? You're going to have to fire the crew then. Cause that was Jordan Tiamu. Went off. Um, Yep, that was Little Rock War Memorial. I knew that looked. Yeah, Winsipedia needs to get their shit together. Um, yeah, that's a that's a typo. Yeah, 2018 was in Little Rock. I remember that was the one in the rain. DK had the neck injury in that one. Octavius Cooley had the big catch. Um, and then yeah, 2019 Ole Miss wins, and 2020 in Fayetteville, Matt Corral has the six interception game. 2021 they win the Thriller. Uh, the shootout, and then last year. Obviously... I mean, I was I was at the Eli game, and I I think that game's still going on right now. <laughs> that was when they were still finishing up the South End Zone. Oh, for sure. Um, I, I, I think I remember the only thing I remember that that game was like the guys. Uh, there was a little secret route right there at the end of the end zone, and they just were throwing up liquor bottles because the whole <laughs> student section was like out of it. I mean, it was like I, I mean, how many overtimes was it? Seven. God. Yeah. That's wild. Tough. What scene. year was that? Was that 2001? Wow. That made my back. Yeah. Two, 2001, 58, 56. Yeah. It definitely started to make my back hurt. I forgot to take my medicine this morning. <laughs> Whew, yeah. That's a long um, time ago. I mean, Eli was back this weekend for the, uh, yeah. They have a reunion. Yeah, 2003 team got honored. Cutcliffe was there looking looking svelte. My man's still in shape. How there was some pick. How old is David Cutcliffe? My uh my dad talked with him and uh said he looked he looked great. He's 69 years old, but I saw Mike Espy put out a picture of him and and Cutcliffe. Oh yeah, uh, whenever he was there, yeah, dude, Cutcliffe's forearms in that pick. My man was in the weight room, getting after. Yeah, um, Corey Peterson comes in the store a lot, and he always gets uh, he always gets chicken, and we always get try to get a story out of him. And he, uh, we were talking about Trig, you know, missing practices, and he and uh, he's like, I mean, missing like meetings and stuff, and he's like, dude, if you were like not 30 seconds early or a minute early to cut cliffs meetings. Oh, he would, I mean, he would, he'd kick you off the team. Like, I mean, like it's, he's like, everybody like was the, in the fear of God of like not showing up on time. So like everybody, yeah. 
would would be you know sitting there ready to go i mean you know and that's and that's just two di- you know two different generations you know you can't uh-huh. you know it just it is what it is now you know you got you got these kids that are getting paid to you know play a sport and you know it's just but uh but yeah that, it was kind of funny i was like man i'm the same way i was like i hate being late for things because uh you know everybody's like looking at you like well we'd be we'd be there about 30 minutes ago if greg showed up you know <laughs> just just um but anyway i just don't uh i, I just i kind of feel like how you know, what Corey peterson said i was like feel like that i'm that guy too i don't want to be like i'd rather be always be on time i'm with you here I, i'm the history of this game is kind of throwing me off but i we need to live in the now Greg, we don't need to worry about what happened last year. Or no, 10 years no, ago. we're we're the we're look. This is how you need to look at it. We're the better football team. We're, we've got the more men, more momentum into coming into the game. We have more to play for. Uh, we need to get to that bye week, you know, with only one loss to regroup, maybe get some people healthy, and we should roll by three touchdowns. This is plain and simple. We should not worry about this game at all. I mean, you know, now with that being said, I'm pretty sure it's going to be like five minutes to go. We're only going to be up by seven and, and Arkansas is driving for some, you know, just that just how it goes with the Ole Miss fan. But no, I think we should just handle this and we just, you know, play up, play up to our standards. And if we play up to our standards, we win by two or three touchdowns. I like the matchup for Ole Miss going against Arkansas's defense. They're not nearly as tough up front. Uh, bumper pool finally graduated. Thank God. Um, he's not out there making 19 tackles a game anymore. I think something clicked last weekend with the offensive line and Quinshawn Judkins and Bentley and the passing game is opened up. Priest corn's healthy. Trey Harris is doing what Trey Harris does. And then you got to hope Zakari Franklin's really close to being a hundred percent. Put those guys with Dayton Wade and Jordan Watkins that's as good a pass catching group as anybody in the conference. I just think they're going to be a lot more efficient controlling the ball and keeping KJ Jefferson on the sideline. I like Ole Miss here probably 38 23, 38 24, something like that. Um, I think it's going to be a, you know, a controlled tempo, you know, very methodical win for Ole Miss. I think, like you said, get to the bye week, get healthy and get ready for that monster game on the road at Auburn, uh, which is going to be their another, Super Bowl. Another another thing to watch is you got they've got to tackle KJ Jefferson when they when they first tackle him. Like if he gets yes. anything, like uh, because I mean honestly, I feel like the matchups with our DBs and their wide receivers, there's nothing that scares me to be like, all right, well we need to worry about him. So you just got to make sure that's that uh, that spy, you know, whenever he gets to him, you know, makes the tackle because I mean, you know, um, that's, uh, that's where KJ Jefferson can hurt you. So that's the, that's the big key for me in the game. All right. 11 a.m. ESPN LSU trying to get off the mat, traveling to Columbia, Missouri to take on a ranked Missouri team that is five and oh, and they're feeling themselves a little bit here. I, I'll, I'll make it quick. I'm going to go with the better quarterback. I like Jane Daniels and Brian Thomas was impressive last week. I knew about Malik neighbors. Brian Thomas was legit. Uh, I I think LSU responds here. Um, I I told David the running back was good. Diggs, the Notre Dame. Yeah. He had a great game against Ole Miss. I I told, yeah, I told David in our show on Tuesday that if this was a night game, I'd give Missouri a little bit more of a shot because you get that crowd, Plenty of time during the day to stew and and get lubed up, but 11 a.m. kicks can be kind of sleepy for home teams. I like LSU to bounce back here. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I just think LSU. I mean, uh, just across the board, they just ran into a buzzsaw in in Ole Miss last night at home. Um, I mean, the other night home. Um, uh, I, I I I just can't believe in Missouri. I just they uh they don't do it for me. So I'll I'll take LSU in the points here. All right, yeah, they're only uh, they're only given six, so it's not like you got to go out of your way to lay the points. All right, two thirty CBS. This is one that Ole Miss fans will probably have on a TV in the Grove or in the bar. Or if you're at home, you'll be tuned into this one because you need to have your towel. You need to be doing your midnight yell. You need to be pulling for the Aggies here in terms of having a chance in the SEC West. Number 11, Alabama at Texas A&M. I don't know how A&M's not ranked um, 
they've been playing really well. They lost to a really good Miami team and they're still not ranked. Doesn't make any sense to me. Alabama is giving two points here. I'm not going to go deep into this one, Greg. I like the Aggies outright. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you. I just feel like, uh, um, you know, uh, that Miami game might have been a trap game for Texas A&M, and uh, they probably got their, their stuff together. I just uh, the last uh, – I think Jimbo is the only guy to beat Saban more than – no, that was someone that beat um, Saban. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I I just feel like – Johnny uh, Mansell still... beat him. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> Have you seen that documentary on Yeah, Netflix? it was it, it was good. It felt like it felt a little rushed, but reliving yeah. all of all of that hoopla was fun. He was special. I hate, I, I hate whenever I watch something I, and I give the meh after a while. Yeah, you know, I, I this feel like could have been so much better. Yeah, it could have been longer. They could have done a little bit more of a deeper dive. No, I, I like Texas A&M at home uh, this week. Uh, I just, you know, I don't think their uh, Alabama's that good at the quarterback position, and uh, this is where, uh, a, a, this is a spot where um, they're vulnerable uh, on the road. So uh, I like Texas A&M. Yeah, the the front seven is key here for A&M. That that defensive line is nasty. You know, Greg, it, it's funny how it works when you when you recruit and sign. <laughs> you know, 19 five stars on the defensive line, they're eventually going to be good. They can't all bust. Um, right. Well, so, they got the money to do it, so it definitely <laughs> can help out when you can, you know, sit there and fork it out right. for, you know, for it. But, um, yeah, I like A&M here. I, I, think, I think they just and win. I mean, set up. I mean, like Ole Miss could roll and, you know, Alabama and, and A&M win by two touchdowns and, you know, uh, uh, we could set up a, 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 you know, a big game day in Oxford uh, for that game because it could set oh, yeah. up for it. Yep. All right. Because it basically would determine the West. Well, not basically determine the West. I mean. You got to well, hope. You got to hope A&M wins this weekend. So Bama has the one loss and then. You got to hope they lose again, which they could very well lose to Tennessee, LSU. Uh, there's there's plenty of chances for them to take another L because you have the head to head against LSU, and then you set up like you said the big matchup in November, and you get the head to head against A and M, and then you're in. Well, you might have a little shake up this weekend because uh, the Big Blue Nation uh, can run the ball. So I, I kind of like uh, Kentucky yeah. this week. I don't know if you, I don't know if you were doing Let's... that game next, but. Yeah, yeah. Let's I really, just... I really like Kentucky. I mean, I just, um, you know, Stoops. It's not. I mean, you know, uh, I know Kentucky fans uh, get bored with it, but hey, it it gets the job done. You know, you establish the run. I think they scored a touchdown with thir- With Florida had thirteen players on the team on the field. Yeah, and they still scored. <laughs> I mean, it's just you know you play good defense and you run the ball and you you know you can set up a couple play action passes. Uh, and you have a couple people, you know, that can, um, you know, that can take a safety on deep. Uh, just, you know, uh, it's it's a boring, boring style, but uh, it definitely gets it done. And, you know, Georgia's just kind of I, I, I think Georgia, what it is, is they uh, they find out how good the other team is and then they just play with them the whole time. And then be like, all right, well, it's time to it's time to end up. We're better than them. We, 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 we probably should beat them. You know, uh, I just that's every game seems like they've been doing that. Yeah, I. I don't know what to think about this game. I, I Georgia has been so average all year, and then they just finally get to that point where they just panic and hit the Brock Bowers button and they get a win. This rivalry is so one sided. It's 62 to 12, Georgia. They uh, currently have a 13-game winning streak. I just don't know if I think Kentucky can get it done. It's in no, Athens. I, I, it, it, it just it depends on you know what happens in that first two. I mean, if if Kentucky can run the ball, I mean, I would feel like they can control the clock. They can keep Georgia's offense off the field because I promise you, Stoops has no problem having a 19, 20 play drive. Uh, I mean, he'll he, you know I just. That's the only way I feel like you can beat Georgia is just take, take make sure the offense is off the field. But their defense is so good they can cause fumbles and interceptions. They can score also. So it's just it's going to be it's it's going to be tough to beat Georgia this year. I this is 
I said it was going to be last week, but it was a rivalry game, and you know those can get kind of weird on the road. Back home, this might be the circle of wagons game for Georgia, where they know what Kentucky's going to do. They they the game plan is is not a secret. Kentucky has an identity, and they're going to try to run the football at you and be physical, shorten the game, take the air out of the ball, all that stuff. I just don't know if they can out physical Georgia. I know Georgia's defensive numbers are not great in terms of sacks and tackles for loss and things like that, but just across the board, they're more talented. The 14 and a half is kind of scary though. Like maybe it's a seven, eight point game. They throw a pick six and Georgia covers. It could easily be, you know, like 28 to 10 and Kentucky gets out of there running and tries to start passing and that defense gets to them. So, I mean, uh, I think the number is it is kind of spot on, but it should be a good game. I don't know. I, Fourteen and a half is a lot of points in in a in a game. You got to give Kentucky some credit. It's a little. Yeah, I I honestly wouldn't touch this one. I don't know what to think because I didn't think Kentucky would whip Florida like they did, and Georgia's just been kind of a mystery so far. Um, all right, last one on the schedule because we're not going to talk Vandy, Florida. Nobody cares. Um, oh, well, I didn't know they were playing. Actually, no, we'll we'll get to it because that's it. We're not going to talk Western Michigan, Mississippi State. Vandy, yeah, because at, uh, the, uh, the weren't they? Didn't they say they were going to eat the dogs this weekend on their Twitter uh, page? <laughs> so I cute. did not see that, but that's that's aggressive. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Broncos uh, eat do- dogs all the time for sure. Yeah, that's everybody knows that. Um, so speaking of Florida. They return home, Vandy two and four, Florida three and two. Both teams are, are reeling here. Vandy loses to Mizzou last week. Florida loses to Kentucky in embarrassing fashion. It's 18 and a half to Florida. I, it's a lot of points for but an I mean, offense Vanderbilt's that really terrible. can't score. Vanderbilt's terrible. They are, and uh I wouldn't touch this one either just because what Florida team is going to show up? Is it the team that beat Tennessee or is it the team that got dominated by if, Kentucky if, if or Florida's Utah? Pull, if Florida's pulling quarterbacks that from the transfer portal out of the, out of the big 10, I, I would, I would not, I would think about taking Vanderbilt. I mean, God. Yeah. Cause I, even if Florida wins, the, you, you got to uh, cover we take the under what's the, uh, probably the under might the be total the is the total is 52. I mean, it's gross. Do not yeah. watch this game. Like everybody out there listening to this podcast, do not watch this game. It will be awful. Man. I mean, I guess I'll take Florida. Jeez, they're terrible. Yeah, I I don't know if they I mean, I just don't see Clark Lee in Aren't that Aren't they team paying that quitting. guy like nine million dollars? Clark Lee? Napier? No, Napier. Oh, Napier. Yeah, he's like in the seven two five range, I think. Hey. They're already they're already pissed. They're over it. Um how many how many coaches have they had in the last two years? Like three? We've got Mons. him, Mullen, Muschamp, McElwain. Yeah. That guy, the offensive coordinator from Boise State. Isn't that no, he didn't go there. Charlie, uh, who was it? Well, we can just no. That was the Auburn. He went to Auburn. That was the. We can Auburn. just look it up, Greg. That was the that was the terrible Auburn hire. Because I feel like I'm missing someone before Urban left. Uh, no, so we got him. He's take, is got he taking the uh, is he taking the Michigan State job or is that just <laughs> no? He already he already came out and said he's not interested. God. <laughs> Why would anybody hire that guy? Uh, people are desperate, man. Desperate times. Desperate times get de- desperate clicks. I, I mean, it, it's people forget, man. Michigan State made the college football playoff under Mark D'Antonio. Did they? Yeah. I mean, they got drilled by uh, Alabama. And that was, I mean, do you remember it like went viral when Derrick Henry like stiff armed their defensive lineman. Um, yeah, they got drilled in that. Uh, it was a Cotton Bowl in twenty fifteen. I just they lost thirty eight nothing. Why Mel Tucker's getting paid the money he's getting paid? He's getting paid like ten million, right? 
Well, I don't think he's getting any more. Well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, what did he do to get that? Mel Tucker I mean, needs to send a, a big old check to Kenneth Walker the third because that was what got him that extension. Because they had they had that dude and went off a couple years ago, and then because uh, they won, I mean, they were good that year. I I don't think he deserved that big of a raise, but yeah, in 2021 they went 11 and two. Wow. Kenneth Walker the third was he was the Walter Camp Award winner, the best college football player. Um he wasn't a finalist for the Heisman, but um but yeah, I mean he was he was fantastic for them that year. Um I'm trying to find his... Is there any other bit is there any other big games uh this weekend? Uh yeah. Um Definitely a bunch that I'm going to be paying attention to um, as far as the top 25 goes. Um, let's pull it up here. So. Oh, uh, you, Oklahoma and Texas. That's just yeah, a big game. Supposedly Red the River, over, is the, uh, over is the play on that. Red River shootout at 11 on ABC. Maryland and Ohio State's kind of sneaky. Maryland's 5-0. and um, Is Tua's uh, brother still playing at Maryland? Oh, yeah. Slanging it. Oh, nice. Uh, you've got Syracuse at North Carolina could be kind of fun. Um, that sounds like an over. You have got Notre Dame at Louisville. That's a ranked on ranked matchup. Michigan's got to travel to Minnesota. It's their first road game of the year. I believe that's correct. Um, is Oregon? Oh got no, excuse me, off? excuse me. They went to Nebraska last week. My apologies. Uh, where's um, Where's Colorado? Because my mom uh, let me know the most watched college football game last weekend was Colorado and USC, and I told her I said, "Mom, I do not need any more they, college football uh, <laughs> updates from you." They have had the top watched game four out of the five games this year. Oh yeah, she gave me a Travis, of. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift update too. I said, "Mom," I was like, "You've never <laughs> cared about football ever." That's great. And now your favorite team is the the Chiefs. Swifties and, are bringing people together. Yeah, I guess, man. I couldn't. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't sing one song. Well, that's my fault. Colorado is in Tempe, playing Arizona State. I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna ask her if that's the most watched game to, uh, this weekend. <laughs> I can't Probably wait to won't be. No, I, I I can't wait to ask her. The one that I'm going to be glued to in the afternoon, Washington State at UCLA. I love the Cougs and what they've been yeah, doing. Yeah, they've got a good little football team. They my, uh, uh, they, my they guy. took care of Oregon State, and then Oregon State beat uh, Utah the other day. So yeah. that Pac-12 is a, actually a pretty sneaky good conference. Dude, it's a shame they're getting split up. It's fun. Um, yeah, Cam Ward, the quarterback at Wazoo. Ole Miss was recruiting him at one point before getting Jackson Dart. Um, He's having himself a hell of a year. Almost 1,400 yards passing, 13 touchdowns, no picks. Taking wow. care of the football. So that is your week six. And before I let you go, as always, want to remind you, get over to LB's this weekend. Get your steak, get your chicken, get your wings, sausage, everything you could possibly imagine. Greg and them have it. Go get a plate lunch. Philly's still on Thursday, right? Philly's on Friday, but I mean, Friday. we we, uh, we'll, uh, we can probably put it together for you. All right. Yeah. Go get your plate lunch, get you some meat, and get ready for Arkansas Ole Miss, 6.30 p.m. SEC Network. All right, Greg. Appreciate you as always, my friend. This has been fun. We will be back next week. Uh, it'll be bye week, so we'll have to get a little get a little creative on what we talk about for our grub session. But uh, that's been, or excuse me, this has been Red and Blue Smoke. That's Greg Jones over there. I'm Zach. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Until next week, we out of here. <laughs>